Committee, and should they? Joining us now to talk about that and a whole lot more, GOP Senator Tom Cotton of Arkansas. Senator, great to have you here today. Great to be on with you, Shannon. All right, I feel like there's so many things I want to talk to you about, but let's start with that SCOTUS nomination. Any wiggle room, do you see any GOP senators willing to have a hearing, have a vote of any kind? No, Shannon, I don't. But first off, let me say this about Justice Scalia. Uh, he was a great jurist, a uh, great American, a great man. And whoever ends up taking that seat on the Supreme Court will not replace Justice Scalia. He is irreplaceable. They broke the mold when they made him. Now, on the process to fill that seat, uh, we think the American people deserve a say in this. Every four years, the American people get a say in who will control the White House, who will control the Congress. This is the very rare occasion in which they will also have a say in who controls the Supreme Court. So we think that we should wait and let the American people weigh in in the election on who they want to make that appointment and the Senate that they want to confirm that appointment. How do you respond to critics who say, of course, it is the president's prerogative to nominate someone and the Senate should at least consider that individual? Well, in 2014, the people had a say as well. They said stop. They wanted no more of the overreach from Barack Obama, and they elected a Republican Senate to put the brakes on the Obama agenda. They did not elect a Republican Senate to rubber to create a new Supreme Court that will rubber stamp the Obama agenda, particularly in light of the fact that in 2013, the Senate Democrats broke the rules of the Senate specifically to pack the courts of Washington, D.C., so President Obama's executive actions wouldn't receive appropriate review. That's why, one, another reason why we think it's important that the American people have a say here. Are you worried at all about political backlash in this decision if the White House, Hillary Clinton, if she's the eventual nominee, out there on the campaign trail saying the obstructionist GOP is shutting down Washington, you have to elect me so that I can appoint someone to the Supreme Court and get it done? No, in fact, I think Hillary Clinton should be worried about political backlash. For instance, uh, Justice Scalia was the deciding vote and wrote the opinion on the case that recognized what the Constitution plainly says, all Americans have a right to keep and bear arms to defend himself and herself or their or person's families. Uh, so those issues are going to be at stake on the election trail this uh, fall, and I think that's as it should be. The American people should be able to decide these matters. All right, this week the president laid out how he plans to finish closing down Gitmo. Um, you are a veteran who has fought overseas with regard to a lot of the individuals and, and issues that are tied up in Gitmo. He also talked about the fact that he, there's a plan to bring some people here. At least he wants to do that. There's been bipartisan opposition to that. Um, your response? Widespread bipartisan opposition. Um, over 90 votes every year in the Senate for the last seven years. We don't need to bring hardened terrorists at Guantanamo Bay to the United States. And that's all that's left there. In fact, it's gotten to the point now where the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff is refusing to weigh in and approve the transfer of some of these detainees to other countries. We don't need to bring these hardened terrorists to the United States. That's why federal law, year after year after year under Barack Obama, has prohibited it. And while just this week you had Attorney General Lynch and the nominee to be the general counsel of the Department of Defense say that federal law prohibits this kind of action. So I would expect military officers to refuse to bring any detainees here to the United States as long as federal law clearly prohibits it. Okay, also bipartisan support in the Senate for a criminal justice reform measure. You're opposing it, at least in some measure. Why? Well, I, I think there's things that we can do to reform our criminal justice system, but we have to look at the details. I think we could reform our prison system so prison isn't dangerous to corrections officers or people who are in prison. We could do a lot of work to focus on rehabilitation and redemption of uh, prisoners because if you don't get life without parole or death, then you're going to be back on the streets, and we should try to get those people back on the right side of the law. And I think we should address the overcriminalization of private conduct in this society. I don't think that we should let hardened, violent felons back onto the streets because inevitably they will commit heinous crimes. That's just happened last month in Ohio. A federal prisoner who benefited from early release from previous Sentencing Commission guidelines brutally stabbed and murdered his ex-girlfriend and her two small children. I'm afraid we'll see that kind of thing again if we go forward with the legislation as currently written. If we can make sure that it's addressed for some uh, those other priorities I identified, and it doesn't let violent felons back on the street, then that might be a possible path forward for legislation. Are you confident that it could be amended or tweaked in a way that it could earn your vote? It, it is possible. I mean, again, we'll have to look at the details. Uh, but there are very few people in the federal prison system who are not hardened drug dealers and traffickers. People who, you know, got arrested for just carrying a dime bag of marijuana or an individual uh, sized dose of heroin or cocaine, they generally don't get in federal prison. In Arkansas, so at least they really don't get in state prison either. And for those very rare cases in which there is a manifest injustice, my case would be that's why we have a presidential pardon. You know, the first Republican president, Abraham Lincoln,
Washington was the most merciful and charitable of all presidents. And he was one of the most prolific users of the pardon. So for those hard cases, we do have a means right now to make sure justice is done. And that's the presidential pardon. All right. We'll keep an eye on that issue and many others. Uh, 